the real question and the only question for uh, Central Command and the other warfighting headquarters is, do we wait until a ship gets hit and the crew possibly injured, or do we take a preemptive strike uh, knowing that they're going to continue to fight until something drastic is done. So I think uh, all I would say at this point is we got the right guys in the command positions. Uh, let's wait to see what happens. But I have no doubt that those radar sites that are directing some of these operations will be the first to go if there is that tough decision to send an armed uh, capability into uh, Yemen to wipe out their capabilities. What capability would that require, General? What would that look like? I'm assuming we're not talking about boots on the ground. Oh, no, no. I'm, I, you know, we can do this with cruise missiles. We can do this with uh, uh, JDAMs fired from the sky. There are a lot of different capabilities. And, I, and, and I'm glad you asked that question, Joe. I don't see anything uh, in uh, the offing that would have American boots on the ground or anybody's boots on the ground. Uh, they, these mm -hmm. are static targets for the most part, some mobile, but we've got some pretty good intelligence capability that doesn't realize need uh, eyes on the prize or boots on the ground. But isn't the concern that ultimately it could escalate the situation to a point where potentially boots on the ground may be necessary? Right now we're talking about Iranian proxies here, but upset them too much. Don't you risk awakening the actual bear and potentially direct confrontation with Iran? Well, uh, that's a choice that Iran has to make. If in fact the bear is the is actually not the bear, but the cat's paw that is directing Hezbollah, the Houthis, the Hashid in Iraq, uh, the uh, um, Hamas inside of Gaza. It seems like every terrorist organization starts with H. Uh, then uh, eventually there's going to have to be some sort of uh, decision about what to do next. I wrote an article this morning uh, for Political EU, parenthetically, in a blatant attempt to do some self-promotion, talking about what I believe to be the next step, which is uh, we sent a pretty clear message with the Carter Doctrine, uh, and sitting inside that uh, uh, Capitol when Carter delivered that State of the Union speech was a young senator named Biden. It's time for us to restate that doctrine, which says uh, if, if any nation or their proxies attack American vital interests, then we need to respond in any way appropriate to include military force. We need to give Iran sort of that last chance to do the right thing. When we talk about last chances, are you among those worried about a wider conflict, General, or can we keep this contained? Uh, I, that's a question you really ought, ought to ask Tehran. I mean, they're the ones that are inflaming. Uh, we're trying to contain, they're trying to inflame. Uh, hopefully, uh, they're still at a position where they can reel in uh, these terrorist groups because I think Iran probably has woken up to the fact that the, the region doesn't need a regional war and some of that backsplash could certainly come into Iran. Mm -hmm. Well, as of now, the actual war is still contained between Israel and Hamas. But the other message, in addition to concerns around escalation of this conflict to something more broader regionally that we heard from Secretary of State Antony Blinken while he was traveling throughout the Middle East, is this idea that he presented in Israel yesterday that Israel essentially needs to be pulling back its operations in Gaza, in part because of humanitarian considerations. Yeah. What phase of the war are we now in? Does the phase of the war we are in match where the U.S. would like it to be? Well, I think the United States is sort of nudging Israel to get to that phase. Uh, Israel will say that's already happening inside of Gaza City. We're not doing bombing there. We still have some problems that we've got to clean up down in Khan Yunus. Uh, but the United States wants them to start focusing not on aggregate targets, but high value targets. I think we've seen the attack and, and uh, the strike on both the Hezbollah leader and the Hamas leader in Lebanon are two good examples of, I think, where the United States is pushing uh, the Israelis. And uh, because, as Secretary Blinken said yesterday, we've got to focus on uh, a ceasefire, resettlement of the internally displaced Gazans back to their homes, uh, feeding them and uh, getting some international reconstruction in there. So I think the United States is trying to lead uh, rather than push and try to create incentives for the Israelis to uh, wrap this thing up uh, because in many ways that's the only way they're going to get their hostages back 
the infrastructure Hamas destroyed, and the opportunity to take out the Hamas leaders, all of which are mm -hmm. the terminal objectives announced on October 8th by the government of Israel. We have just a minute left, General Kimmett. How long will the U.S. keep all of these assets in the region? Uh, the nice thing about American capability and at, at the benefit and at the behest of the United States taxpayers is that we have a lot of flexibility. We have a lot of capability. We'll keep it in as long as it's necessary. We'll replace it mm -hmm. if necessary, and then we'll pull it out when no longer necessary. We can do that for an extended period of time. As you saw with the USS Ford being pulled out and the Bataan Ready Group being pulled in, we can do this for an awful long time. 